Welcome to Electron Line, and in order to understand bonding between atoms a little bit better, we're going to look at some of the theories behind the bonding mechaniz mechanization. And so we're going to start with some very basics. First of all, why would atoms want to bond in the first place? So we're going to look at hydrogen. Two hydrogen atoms, why do they make a bond? And so I got myself a little chemistry set here, and so here are my two little hydrogen atoms. And when they're very far apart, there really is no molecular interaction here. There's no attraction of any sort. There's no forces involved. So they can just go on their merry way, and there's not going to be virtually any interaction between the atoms. But when they get closer together, what happens now is that these positive nuclei, the protons at the center of the hydrogen, and the negative electrons, they begin to exert forces on one another. The negative electrons, they tend to re repel each other, and the positive protons tend to repel each other. But then the negative electron from this atom tends to be attracted to this proton, and this negative electron tends, tends to be attracted to that proton. So there's kind of a balance of forces taking place. And what happens is when they get closer and closer and closer, since the protons, the nuclei, they build up what we would call an electric field around them, and so there's a potential positive potential around these nuclei, these negative electrons begin to attract each other, and so they tend to fall what we would call into a potential well. They, the closer they get, the lower the energy state of the two atoms. And so what I tried to do here is draw a little picture of that. So let's say that this is an energy diagram. If uh, this is representing the distance between the atoms, and as the hydrogen atoms get closer and closer and closer together, the energy state of those atoms drops and the lower energy state is a more stable state. It's kind of like thinking of a soccer ball. If you kick a soccer ball, uh, let's say there's a level field, there's a big hole in the field like this. Where's that soccer ball going to end up? Well, the soccer ball is going to end up at the very bottom of the hole. And so the potential uh, of the situation between two atoms is kind of the same. The potential well is kind of like a hole for a soccer ball, and the the atoms want to be at a particular distance apart from one another so that they're at the lowest energy state, the most stable energy state. So what happens when they get closer and closer together, what we find is that because there's only one electron in each of the two s orbitals, so in each of the s orbitals of each atom, they tend to be um, not, uh, they tend to have constructive interference with each other. So when they're in very close proximity to each other, they can actually occupy the same region between the two protons, which makes this a very electronegative region. So this becomes very negative in nature. And then we have the two positive charges here. So what happens is this negative region here, this would be a, a region of highest probability where the two electrons will reside within the two when the two s orbitals overlap. And because of that, this region is more electronegative. These are electropositive, which causes the negative to be attracted to the positive, brings the two atoms together, and they fall into the lowest energy state. The lowest energy state here will be obtained when the distance between the nuclei is exactly 74 picometers. The picometers, of course, 10 to the minus 12 meters. So at that point, the energy is at minus 436 kilojoules per mole below zero. Zero is the energy level when they're infinitely far apart, so they fall into what we call a potential well, the lowest energy state at minus 436 kilojoules per mole, that would be per mole of hydrogen uh, bonds. So if we then calculate the energy of a single bond, it's 4.53 electron volts. So that's quite a bit of energy. That's a fairly strong and stable bond. And here I have a little example of that. There is a hydrogen bonded together um, between them like that. And so the little gray bar represents the bonding between the two. That's where the electrons reside. And of course, this is where the two protons are at. And it's a very stable bond. And so it's because the atoms are in a lower energy state in this particular formation than there, they will naturally attract each other until they fall into that low energy state. What happens when they get too close together? Well, when they get too close together, then the repulsive forces between the nuclei become larger, and then there's a larger repulsive force, so the closer you bring them, the less and less energy stable this situation will be. At some point, you bring them so close together that the attractive forces will balance out the repulsive forces, and then if you bring them even closer together, the repulsive forces between the nuclei become so strong that they simply will just push each other apart. 
So there will be an equilibrium setting that will be obtained when the distance is just right so that the attractive forces relative to the repulsive forces are the greatest and therefore that would be the stable formation of that atom. And that's the basic theory of atom bonding. The reason why atoms bond is because in certain situations where the electrons will reside, they form a lower energy state, attract the nuclei to each other, and therefore you get these chemical bonds. So we'll look at some other examples and then we'll go through it very systematically, one video after another, so you can see how and why bonding occurs between various atoms in various situations. That's the start.